protesters have defaced a statue of Winston Churchill, smearing him as a racist. Smash the old, build the new. 18th century slave trade owner Edward Coulson in Bristol stands no more. In order to successfully implement a globalist socialism, we have to transition away from the imperialist colonial past. A protest is planned at Oxford University in the United Kingdom today in a bid to remove the statue of the controversial colonial figure Cecil John Rhodes. The oppression of non-whites and minorities. Such a violent legacy of colonialism, imperialism, um, slavery. And to decolonizing. Which requires the abolishment of all oppressive signs, symbols, statues, memorials, monuments, buildings. Nelson's Column, one of London's most iconic sites. But there are those who want it torn down. Lord Nelson may be a national hero, but some activists allege he was pro-slavery. Of course, it also requires the re-education of the masses, spearheaded by our benevolent and far-sighted and fair and just leaders, such as the London mayor, Sadiq Khan, of course. Our public realm, statues, squares, street names, don't accurately reflect our values or, or London. And so what the commission will do is look at diversity in the public realm in relation to the lack of black people who are on statues or streets named after, our LGBTQ plus community, women, those who are disabled. Are precursors for this, if we look at China, the Cultural Revolution was a total success. A youth organization called the Red Guards springs up throughout the country. The Red Guards travel all over the country, smashing the old culture destroying much of the cultural heritage. What about the Palace of Westminster or Buckingham Palace? The socialist movement in China, they battled against the four olds. You remember that from the history books? Old custom, old culture, old habits, old ideas. They all have to go. I, I don't know what's going on in London because London is no longer an English city. To live in London right now and, and be a young person. Everything that is holding back a more peaceful, equal, just society, a progressive way of life, everything that is holding these ideas back must be abolished. So, so rather than hide behind sham and whitewash investigations, when will the Prime Minister finally apologise for his derogatory and racist remarks? A lot of British writings are highly racist. <laughs> they have to go. Don't teach them in our classrooms. We deserve to be taught without fear without hate, without discrimination. You start, how far back with history do you go? I mean, how you could look at, at any people that had been enslaved or any genocide that had happened and say, we've, we've got to overturn that, we've got to No, make. because this, we have, this, the West is built on racism. How do we liberate contemporary British society from the sins of the past? In this country, in 15 or 20 years time, the black man will have the whip hand over the white man. Many of our friends in Africa, in India, China, in South America, they realized that tyranny has a face. It's a white man's face. Tyranny has a culture. It is white man's culture. has habits. It is a habit of oppressing people of color and minorities. Tyranny has a past. Slavery, imperialism, colonialism, westernization. Now the propaganda of the British government is now, you know, these cheering natives thanking the British Empire. And it was all designed to make people here feel good. That, uh, that viewpoint has endured even though it wasn't real. 
even though the people didn't want to be exploited. British Empire, all of this came from enslavement and colonialism and ill-gotten gains. I suggest not only to abolish the four olds, but also to build the four news. New people, new culture, new habits, and new ideas. So, this case is the case of reparations. Reparations are needed as an apology. Today, to give us reparations. They're a tool for you to atone for the wrongs that have been done.